Vector DA Patient Cases, presented by Dr. Grace C. Wright, Clinical Associate Professor in the Department of Medicine at NYU Langone Health. So we have a 74-year-old Caucasian female. She's a classic seronegative rheumatoid. Um, she's actually a retired nurse. And you'll see from her BMI that she's a bit more on the robust side. 31.5 is her BMI. Uh, and that's composed of a height of 5'2 and a weight of 178 pounds. So when she first presented, her uh, disease was really sort of masked by a bunch of other stuff, which is what happens, right? She was a very severe asthmatic. Um, she's somebody who liked to go and hike glaciers with her asthma acting up. And so when she developed this inflammatory arthritis, it wasn't quite clear what she had. But there was no question that she had seronegative RA. But her assessment was confounded by the fact that she was obese and she had advanced degenerative disease in her knees. Now we count knees when we do our composite scores, so that already was a confusion. Um, and so if I excluded her knees, her swollen and tender joints would vary and on any given day by uh, two or more points. So there are days she came and it was 10 swollen, 12 tender, and other days she came and I couldn't tell what had happened because she just came back from a hike to Antarctica, right? But this is what we have to live with. Her patient global also varied, and my global varied because we had all of these confounders built in. So I put her on methotrexate back in 2012, um, and she sort of crept along until she uh, then went on to adalimumab, um, actually it was uh, sertilizumab, which we had to stop in May of 2016. Why? Because she had a little black spot that turned out to be melanoma in situ, and by the time we finished excising that, we made the decision that she should stay off anti-TNF therapy. She switched then to Avatacept in uh, June of 2016, and I'm going to walk you through what her scores reflected in the middle of all of this. So here we have on the top um, really her dates going from 2013 all the way to 2017, so this is pretty uh, recent. Her unadjusted scores, um, her current uh, uh, vector scores, and her treatment algorithm on the bottom. So you see that she had a couple of points. Where's my highlighted pointer? She had a couple of moments where she really shot up, right? So she goes up to these really high scores, um, and this is really on therapy, uh, and she ends up in trouble somewhere here, and we switch her over. Why does this case make sense? It's not so much about um, how we think through somebody going from methotrexate to a biologic to switching biologic, but look at what her scores did and how we interpreted them. So we see here, it's the delta that we're talking about. The delta here um, of uh, eight points, and as we go through, I kept looking at her saying, she doesn't look that sick. There's something about her presentation and my sort of clinical assessment of who she was that made her look better than her vector scores did. When we adjusted those scores down, this is where she landed. So my adjusted vector scores now made sense. And this is one of the patients that I said, there's something wrong here, I'm missing something, even though she was obese. Understand here that I'm going to redefine for you the minimally important difference. That absolute change that I want to look at is actually 7.6. We can round that to 8. So when she goes from 55 to 30, that actually matters, right? That's a 25-point drop. So here is where we see that the pressure of her inflammatory burden actually changed over the course of her care, and the adjustment now gave me a score that made more sense. And what is the take-home point? Adiposity contributes to, to the inflammatory burden. It can contribute in ways that we underestimate or overestimate. Patients at the high and low ends of the spectrum may have inaccurate assessments because we were making these assumptions of the surrogacy of adiposity and the inflammatory burden that goes with it. And now that we have the ability to measure, why guess when you can check, right? We now have the capacity to sort of dive deeper and look at the use of uh, biomarkers to assess this. So these adjustments take into account the variables of age, gender, and adiposity, as Len has so very nicely pointed out. We have another way to look at this, another way to cut through another layer of bias as we look at our patients and understand that, yes, they're heterogeneous, their disease is heterogeneous, we're heterogeneous, but we think that a single marker always does it. Doesn't make sense to me, right? So the way that we cut through heterogeneity is to have composite things that look at the differences amongst us. 
So I thank you for your attention, um, and I wish you excitement as you go on the journey of understanding adjustments and how we see through all of the different ways in which we look at the inflammatory burden.